it's a problem on, on a couple of levels. It's a problem because we have people that want a quick fix for a solution for pain and for anxiety, and there are drugs that work short term but don't do a lot of things long term. And then there's a, a bunch of physicians, uh, nurse practitioners, physician assistants that are not well educated uh, on the subject of abuse and addiction to these substances. Since 2004, more adolescents have used opiates for illicit non-medical reasons for the first time than they've used marijuana. In other words, more adolescents have sought to get a buzz from painkillers for the first time than they have from marijuana since 2004. So it's a problem that's getting larger. Everybody needs to know about the non-medical use of prescription drugs. And when I say everybody, I mean the uh, lay population, the people taking them, uh, parents, and healthcare providers. Because as healthcare providers, we suffer from uh, a desire to do well by our patients without some, sometimes recognizing the harm we're going to do long term. And when I say healthcare providers, I just don't mean physicians. I mean nurse practitioners, physician assistants, and even therapists dealing with people that are suffering from pain and anxiety disorders. We have a truly exceptional team. You know, this is not, as a medical director and a chief of addiction medicine, uh, that I, I can't tell you how important it is to have a team of people. And when I look at the team of people that we have put together between Shans Vista uh, and the University of Florida, that is the strength. It's not one individual. You know, although I get to sit here and, and do this little talk, the, the strength is in the team. And when you have a big university and all the, the available talent, you're able to put together a truly talented, competent team, and that's what we have. We have a, we have a very solid, compassionate, a gifted team of people providing care. <music> Families provide the biggest source of, of, uh, of leverage and motivation for patients. And the most critical issue there is, is honesty. Often family members are scared to intervene because they're worried about uh, expressing a concern about somebody's misuse or abuse or addiction to pain or anxiety medicines is going to anger the person uh, you know, more uh, or cause them to do something to, to hurt themselves. And often there's kind of what we call a conspiracy of silence. So often it, it, the way that they can help is by summoning the courage through getting help from other people in a safe way that they feel safe uh, kind of intervening or helping express their concerns to that family member. Sometimes it could be done without the aid of an outside professional and the family has enough uh, infrastructure and strength to do that. Other times they need uh, a safe environment, perhaps a therapist or a treatment expert there as they express their concerns. <laughs> When you look at the history of pain medicines and abuse, this is not a new problem. Uh, morphine, which is one of the original uh, pain medicines used and still is used, was invented a little bit before the uh, Civil War. And if you go back and you look at historically uh, following the Civil War, addiction was called the soldier's disease or the army's disease because the veterans legitimately so had terrible pain from uh, terrible injuries incurred during the war. Uh, and then they found a tremendous relief of emotional discomfort and a sense of well-being from the opiates. And following the Civil War, we had an epidemic of morphine addiction. So this idea that prescription drug uh, abuse or non-medical use of uh, drugs is a new problem is just, it's just wrong. <laughs> What 
What, what are the medicines for? They're to help people function better in life. If they're taking more of a medicine and they're seeking more of the drug and yet life isn't getting better, that's a warning sign. You know, there's other warning signs too. There's a change in behavior, more mood liability, irritability, uh, relationship issues, uh, a change in interest, a loss in, 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 in kind of uh, participation activities that used to be pleasurable and enjoyable. Things that are not inconsistent with, you know, worsening depression. Uh, and that's, that's where uh, abuse and, and addiction to drugs is a very tricky issue becomes, because abuse and addiction become great masqueraders. So sometimes worsening of somebody's physical symptoms, whether it's pain, anxiety, or depression, doesn't always mean, but sometimes that's also a segue to perhaps is there a drug abuse problem present.